All right, we have a 60-year-old couple asking the question, can I retire at 60 with one and a half million dollars? And I'm gonna show you this, and we're gonna use a different strategy than we sometimes use because these individuals are very risk averse, very concerned about running out of retirement income, and so we need to protect their retirement investments and guarantee some of their retirement income over and above just their social security check. Now, we're only going to look at one of the earners' social security for this strategy. They are not married, so we have a non-married couple living together. Now, their assets are pooled in some instances. In some instances, they are not. So this is mainly the higher earners' assets. And so don't get confused when I say couple and I only show you one social security. Now, here's what we've got. We have three buckets. We're looking at the bucket strategy because they are very concerned about one, the stock market. They don't want to lose any more money. And two, they don't want to run out of retirement income. So what we're going to do is we're going to put buckets in place to have certain amounts of income turn on when those years get here. So we're going to turn on one spigot right away. We're going to wait about seven years, turn on another spigot. Then we're going to wait about another 10 years and turn on another spigot. Okay? So the first bucket is going to stay in the stock market. Now, out of the $1.4 million this person has in their 401k, 800 of that is going to go into bucket number one. So we've got $800,000 in bucket number one. This is going to be a stock market investment. So we can invest in mutual funds, stocks, ETFs, fixed income. You know, municipal bonds, treasuries, whatever. We can invest in anything and it's 100% liquid. So if you need the money right away, it can be there in your account. Okay, so we've got $800,000. Now their annual expenses are $60,000 a year. They don't have any debt or any outside obligations. Okay, $5,000 a month is what we need in retirement income. Now we're going to get 6% rate of return on our money. We're going to do this for seven years until we get to the first, the higher earner social security. So $800,000 taken out $5,000 a year, earning 6% for seven years, takes this first bucket of money from $800,000 down to $695,926 at 67. Now, at 67, that's when Social Security is going to kick on. We're waiting to 67 for the higher earner because we want to get 100% of their full retirement benefit. Now, remember, with Social Security, if you take it at 62, you only get 70% of your full retirement benefit. If you take it any time between 62 and 67, you're not going to get your full benefit. If you take it at 67, you get 100% of your full retirement benefit. If you take it at 70, you'll get 124% of your full retirement benefit. Now, you can take it any time between 62 and 70. It doesn't make sense to take it beyond 70. So any time between 62 and 70, you can take your Social Security. For this strategy, we're going to wait and take it at 67. So at 67, our $5,000 in expenses has grown to $6,149 because of inflation. Remember, we're going to use a 3% rate of return. I'm sorry, a 3% inflation rate because that's the 108-year average. Now, $6,149, we've got $2,900 in Social Security kicking on, and that leaves us with $3,249 dollars in retirement income that is needed from our retirement investments. Start bucket number two. So bucket number one has paid out for seven years. We need to give some relief to bucket number one because it's paying out way too much money to sustain itself over the long term. So we have two other buckets. Now remember, these people are very risk averse. So we took $600,000, which was what was left in the 401k. So we had 800 stay in the market. We took 600,000, we put them into indexed annuities. Now, both of these annuities do not have any fees and the maximum growth you're gonna get is probably somewhere between four and 5%. If you get more than that in an indexed annuity, we're gonna high five and chest bump, but let's just say you get 4%. That's a very conservative number. 
Now, on these two annuities, there's a 4% guarantee on the income rider. Basically what that means is in a certain year, the annuity or the insurance company says, hey, you can start taking income out of the annuity guaranteed for the rest of your life based on your age. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in this scenario. So at 67, we have $3,249 in retirement income that is needed. We're gonna take 1,600 of that out of this market money. We're gonna give this a breather. We're only gonna take $1,600 a month. And over here, we're gonna guarantee from the annuity another $1,644, and this is gonna pay out for life. So that's never gonna change. It's never gonna go up, but it's never gonna go down, but it's never gonna run out. So even if we, we pay out all of this $394,000, if it goes to zero, we pay it all out, the insurance company is still gonna pay out the $1,644. That is what we're doing for the income. Remember, one of his main concerns is income, making sure it lasts forever. And so now we've guaranteed at least a portion of it along with Social Security. Now at 77, so our first bucket at 695 is gonna pay out 1,600 bucks. It's still gonna earn 6% a year. That's just kind of our calculation. We're gonna do this for 10 years. Our 695 now grows to a million three thousand one thirty nine at seventy seven. Well, because of inflation, we've let bucket three sit now for seventeen years, and now this annuity will guarantee two thousand four hundred and thirty four dollars every month for the rest of their life. So now we have two guaranteed streams of income along with Social Security that's guaranteed back by the full faith and credit of the United States government, and we still got a million dollars in the market. So sequence of return risk, we've taken care of with these buckets here. The running out of income, we've taken care of here and with this money. Now remember, there was a bucket four that we mentioned at the beginning of this video. Bucket four, we put $100,000 into. We repurposed some of his bank money. And if we earn 6% for 17 years, that's an extra $272,000, right? 272, yeah, $272,000. So along with this million, along with these guaranteed assets here, we got another 272,000 of a taxable brokerage account that he can get to at any time. So we've taken care of the concerns that this client has had. So when he asks the question, can I retire at 60, protect a portion of my money, protect my income, and make sure that I'm never gonna run out, I can say, based on some pretty low assumptions, 4%, 6% rates of return, yeah, we can do that. So yes, you can retire. Hey, thank you so much for watching. God bless, bye-bye. All right, so the question is, can I retire at 60 with blank saved for retirement? So we just looked at the 25X rule, and what the 25X rule says is take your annual expenses and multiply those by 25 to give you how much you need to have saved for retirement. So we have a 60-year-old individual. They've got Social Security at 67 of $2,800 and their annual expenses are $50,000. So, they're doing retirement planning at 60, they've got $50,000 in annual expenses, and they're asking, can I retire with blank? Like, how much do I need to have saved for retirement? Well, if we do the 25X rule, we multiply the 50 by 25, that means they need $1,250,000 saved for retirement, okay? So now, let's put that to the test. Let's say we retire at 60. And we're gonna go to 67 for Social Security. And so that means our annual expenses are $50,000 with inflation, so they start at $4,166. So that's our expenses when we step into retirement at 60. Now we're gonna give our expenses a 3% inflation rate. 
So that means that every year our expenses are gonna grow by 3%. That's the 108 year average for the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, which tracks inflation. So we're gonna use 3%. Now it could be higher in some years, it could be higher for decades, but if you look at a 30 year retirement, the average is 3%. We're also gonna give the money that's invested in the market, our retirement savings, an average rate of return of 6%. So the reason we're going to use 6% as our average rate of return is I just feel like that's a very conservative number. The S&P 500 has averaged about 8% since 1950, so we're going to back off by about 2% to 60 to be a little bit more conservative because now we're in retirement. So we've got 1.25% million dollars saved for retirement. We're 60 years old. We need $50,000 a year with inflation and we're going to take Social Security at 67. So how much in assets do we have at 67? Well, based on this rate of return and a 3% inflation rate, we've got $1,413,319. So now at 67, we're going to start taking our Social Security which means it's gonna ease up the amount of retirement income that's coming out of our assets. We're able to let our retirement assets breathe a little bit because we've turned on our social security. Now, the reason I'm using 67 is because for most of you watching, if you were born after the year 1960, your full retirement age for social security is 67. So if we take social security at 67, you're gonna get 100% of your full retirement benefit. If you take it at 70, you're actually going to get 124% of your full retirement benefit. So for this example, if $2,800 is their Social Security at 67, then at 62, if this person took Social Security, 70% of that would be 1967, so $1,967. So it's a really big difference by waiting those five extra years. But with Social Security and any kind of retirement planning, you need to make sure you're taking Social Security at the optimal time for you. It might not be 67, it might be 62 or 64 or 68 or even 70. Make sure that you have a Social Security plan along with your retirement income plan. So we've got $1.4 million at 67. Now we're gonna get Social Security. So our expenses have grown to $5,000 $236 with inflation. So this is our expenses. Our social security is kicking on, that's 2,800. So that means we need to take out of our portfolio, I'm gonna just change this line real quick, $2,436. We're still gonna have a 3% inflation rate, that's inflation, and we're still gonna have a 6% rate of return, okay? Now, I hope it's okay. I'm doing more of a teaching right now. So don't, it's not, I'm not trying to be fancy. I just want to teach you this. So we've got $1.4 million saved for retirement now at 67. $5,236 is our monthly expenses. Social Security is $2,800. So we need $2,436 coming out of this on a monthly basis with 3% inflation. So if we earn 6%, from 67 to 77, we'll have, and actually let's go up to here because I'm running out of room. We'll have $1,949,000 saved for retirement or in retirement assets at that time. So we started with 1.25 and the reason we use the 1.25 number is because we're using the rule of 25. We're trying to say, does the 25X rule work for retirement planning? So. At 77, we've got $1.9 million. We've grown our assets by about $700,000. Now keep in mind, this is a simple scenario on the board. In the catalog of my YouTube videos, check out some of the other retirement scenarios where we use the financial EKG software, because that's where we go into a deep dive. Like we're calculating in taxes, any kind of vacations, extra money, second homes, rental income, uh, whatever you want sequence of return risk, which is the risk of market loss or market crashes within your retirement. We're able to calculate all that in, but we want to check it on the board first because if it doesn't work on the board, it ain't going to work in the software. So 
At 77, we've got 1.949 say or in retirement assets. So now we go to 87, so let's go another decade. Again, we're gonna earn 6%, that's our rate of return. 3% is our inflation rate. And our expenses have grown to 7,203, right? That's our expenses, they're getting a 3% rate. Now remember, we started at 4,166, and it's grown to 7,203. Remember, the majority of Americans surveyed in a recent survey of millionaires, they said that their expenses were higher than they expected in retirement. Only 8% uh, had their expenses less than what they expected in retirement. So let's assume that our retirement expenses are gonna be higher in retirement. So 7,203 is our expenses. Our social security because of COLA has gone up to 3,373. So Social Security has had an average COLA increase of 1.9% over since the 1970s when they started doing a COLA increase for Social Security. Now, it's been a lot higher the last few years because of inflation, but let's just use that 40-year average because, again, I, I can't see the future. I had a crystal ball. I dropped it coming up the stairs. So, you know, what do you want me to do? 1.9% is the average COLA for Social Security. So now... What we need coming out of our retirement investments is $3,879. So at the end of this decade, earning 6% with 3% inflation, we've got $2,400,000 in retirement assets. So can I retire at 60 with 1.25 million? Yes, you can. So the 25X rule is a great way for you to really dig in to go, okay, do I have enough saved based on my current expenses? And you can do this at 45, you can do this at 50. So if you're doing retirement planning at 45 or retirement planning at 50, this is a great way to say, yes, I do have enough saved for retirement or no, I do not. And what can I do to save more for retirement? Or what do I need to adjust to be able to retire when I want to? Okay, so I hope this entire video has helped. God bless. Bye-bye. Can I retire at 55 years old with $1.6 million saved for retirement? That's what we're going to look at today on the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. I have a client. He's 53 years old. He's got $1.4 million saved for retirement. He lives in New Mexico asking the question, if I retire in two years with a projected retirement savings of $1.6 million, is my money gonna last forever? And what about taxes? Should I do Roth conversions? Should I be looking at other ways to save on taxes? And how should I invest going into retirement? That's what we're gonna look at today on the channel. I've got three specific scenarios to go through with you today. One scenario is gonna be just if I retire at 55, how long is my money gonna last? The second scenario is gonna be, let's look at doing those Roth conversions if all else stays equal. And number three is, let's look at Roth conversions if taxes go up. You ready? Let's get into the software right now. All right, so here's our three scenarios. Retire at 55, no Roth conversions, five-year Roth conversion, taxes go up. That's gonna be the last scenario we look at. And five-year Roth conversion. So let's go to the first scenario, retire at 55. And here we go, we got Jerry. Jerry lives in New Mexico and he's 53 years old. Jerry's gonna retire in February of 2024. Currently makes about $10,000 monthly, so that's about $120,000 is his annual salary. Now, Social Security, we've looked at a couple different scenarios and I'll show you that here on the channel, but we're gonna look at taking Social Security at 62. That actually elongates his retirement income the most. Now, remember with Social Security, you take it at 62, you get 70% 
of your full retirement benefit. You wait till 67, you're actually going to get 100% of your full retirement benefit. And if you take it at 70, if you're an overachiever, a broccoli eater, then you get 124% of your full retirement benefit. You can take it any time between 62 and 70. You got to make a decision that fits your retirement plan. For Jerry, when we've gone through the different scenarios, 62 makes the most sense. So we're going to start there. He's going to get 70% of his full retirement benefit. So from age 55 to 62, most of his retirement income is going to come from his retirement assets. And then Social Security is going to kick on. All right. So Social Security, 62. So let's look at assets. So here's what we've got in assets. So Jerry's got a non-qualified account with $475,000 in it. That's like a taxable brokerage account. He's got that at TD Ameritrade. He's got a SEP IRA of $205,000, which he's putting in $2,500 per month into his SEP IRA. He has an IRA with TD Ameritrade at $475,000. He has a Roth IRA, our IRA, so he's already got a Roth with TD Ameritrade at $222,433. And he's got money in the bank of about $50,000. So all in total, he's got about $1.4 million in assets. Now, from a tax classification standpoint, because this is what he's concerned about, 47% of his money is qualified, meaning pre-tax. So all money that's pre-tax is tax deferred. Tax deferred means you're going to pay taxes on this money at some point. If it's an IRA, a 401k, a 403b, or a TSP, you're going to pay a required minimum distribution at some time in your life, whether that's 73 or 75, depending on your age. So for Jerry, he's concerned about taxes. So can we get more of this red off the screen and get it over here to more green? So we have 15% Roth IRA. We want to try to increase the dark green on this screen. Now, from a risk standpoint, risk is also something that he's very concerned about. Well, currently, we've got all of his assets, so 96% of his assets are at risk of market loss. Now there's different uh, classes of investments inside of his retirement investing account. So AT&T stock doesn't carry the same risk as Tesla stock, but even in his risk allocation, all of the money is at risk of loss, okay? So he's got 96% of that. So he's concerned. So what we normally do is we do a risk assessment. So what a risk assessment allows me to do is ask a few questions and the program populates how much he should have at risk versus how much he should have safe or as conservative as possible. OK, so what dollar amount would you like to keep in liquid accounts such as checking savings or money markets for him? 50,000 is all he wants to keep in the bank. And that's a good round number for him. It's about six months of expenses. So he's good right there. How many years can you let your assets grow before having to take withdrawals? This helps us determine how long you might need to leave your money invested. So we know two years. He's 53 years old. We're going to go to 55. So two years. So zero to two is the time horizon before he's going to have to start taking withdrawals off of this money. What statement best describes how you feel about savings and risk? I do not want to see my principal amount decrease. I cannot afford a significant loss. If my interest or rate of return stays ahead of inflation, I don't want exposure to risk. If I can make a moderate interest or rate of return on my investments, I can withstand some market fluctuations. So that's one we're going to go to a little bit more moderate because he's 55. And what would you consider a reasonable interest rate on your investments? I'm going to say four to six. And the reason I like four to six is because the market's averaged 8% over the last 50 years. That's with inflation included. We're gonna back up two percentage points to six, and I'm gonna show you in the software where we're really gonna back up later in life. Okay, so hold on for that. And risk tolerance, which one of the possible outcomes on a one-year investment indicates the amount of risk you would be comfortable taking? So best case, 102,000 or a $2,000 gain. Worst case, a loss of zero. Best case, you make $4,000. Worst case, you lose four. Best case, you make eight, you lose eight. Best case, you make 12, you lose 12. Best case, you make 16, you lose 16. For him, again, we're still kind of moderate. So 
10 to 12 is, is okay. So we're gonna save and close that. So when we look at the risk classification for him, 58% of his money needs to be in this green area and 38% needs to be in this red area. So that's something we can work on as we go through the EKG, as we go down the line. It, this is not gonna be a situation where that's gonna determine how long his money's gonna last. It's just a, a differentiate him. Where do we need to situate? Where do we need to set his retirement investments? And that needs to adjust as time goes on. The closer you get to 60, 70, 80, your investments need to adjust with your age, okay? Now, from a rate of return, we're going to look at a portfolio weight of 5.79%. That means the investments that are in the market are going to get a 5.79% overall rate of return. And I'm actually going to show you, we're going to go a little bit more conservative because Jerry's kind of a conservative guy. So before retirement, so for the next two years, we're going to project his investments earning 6% a year. After retirement, from 55 on, we're gonna show a 4.4% rate of return. So we're actually gonna go back farther on the conservative scale. And the reason for this is he's just a conservative guy. And so I don't wanna plug in 6% the rest of his life if that's not what in actuality is gonna happen. Because there's a big difference in 4% and 6% with compound interest. Remember, God's greatest gift outside of Jesus is compound interest. And so the longer your investments have in the market, the greater compound interest is gonna work in your favor. So if we're compounding 6%, that's gonna be a lot more money than if we're compounding four. So we have to project that out in the financial EKG. If you wanna contact me, all the information is below. Thank you for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.